don't get so distracted with this, pod, uh, this Patreon read that you don't enjoy the podcast. Seriously, seriously. I get there's a lot going on, and I get it'll make things really annoying to follow. Lots of lots of threads of, and stuff happening. Will Nicole and Max ever come back? When are we ever going to talk about a Batman movie? And did we even see Captain Marvel yet? Listen, <laughs> just go to patreon.com slash evacstation. For a few dollars a month, you can support our show while we rage, wage war with the surface world. I know it's a lot to take at such a low, low price, but did you see those fishmen back there? I just can't let them sit around and go to waste. Again, if you want some closure on all these questions and more, go to patreon.com slash evacstation. And remember, just keep swimming. Aquaman, swift and powerful monarch of the oceans, with ability to summon and command all creatures of the deep. Aquaman, who with his teenage ally, Aqualad, guards and defends all that lives in the seas against the forces of evil. Aquaman, king of the seven seas. You know, I'm glad we didn't overbook this podcast with a uh, full team of people. That might be a little too much for one little podcast to handle in just an hour. We are uh, Wonder Waseska, and with me today, I've got Super (laughs) Matters. And uh, I have Rob Barry Allen, a.k.a. The Flash. (laughs) Ooh, I like that one. Yeah. Rob Barry, I like that. That's good. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah, I like that. I, I, you you were a tough one to put together, but I, I, I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. Uh, That's if you fun. want to support our show, go to uh, patreon.com. You can also go to the various uh, podcast platforms of choice. Peepa, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Podcast Addict. You can also follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook, leaving comments, questions, and all sorts of other fun stuff while we talk about movies. And this week, or I guess I should say today, uh, since we already did What You're Watching, I've got a question of the week for you guys this week. Are you guys ready for this? Yep. Fire away. Would Keen Orm, live action or animated, whichever you prefer, would Keen Orm be a better president than Donald Trump? Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good question because they're both so garbage. Mm. Hashtag Uh, hashtag Ocean Master 2020. I would say Orm, just because you know what his motivations are, and he he's not lying about anything. He's just it's to take take it to the surface. He's not you know making up lies while he goes on national TV it's or trying very, to build a wall. It's a very pro environmentalist <laughs> message, actually. He's a very good yeah. candidate. I mean, he's a psycho, but you know <laughs> you know what he's doing. He's a psycho. You know what he's gonna do. Trump, you're yeah. like, uh, you know, I don't really know what he's gonna do tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Uh, both both of them are bad, but I can't believe I'm going to say this. I actually would prefer Trump. Cause Get I out of here, you blasphemer. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> let, let, hear me out. Hear me out. Good. I would rather an inept moron be at the helm than a very intelligent, like, up villain trying to like trying to to actively run the country into something horrible you can that's what I would so what you're saying right what, what you're saying right is i have a chance then yes <laughs> <laughs> in the choice between an inept moron and who's like you already know is going to be on let's fucking conquer the world page i'd be like ah well Moron's gonna get amazingly far, and then hopefully we'll be able to get him out, and then we'll we'll fix it up after he's fucking gone. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's all I had for this question, really. I thought it was just a fun <laughs> little bit. Um, continuing on with our week of the wet uh, in Crisis in Infinite Films, we dive into Justice League: Throne of Atlantis, released in 2015, directed by Ethan Spaulding and written by Heath Corson. Uh, This animated work was not released in theaters, so no box office numbers to share with you today. It stars Sam Witwer, uh, Jason O'Mara, uh, uh, Shimar Moore, uh, Suma Lee Montano, uh, uh, Christopher uh, Gorham, 
Gorm. I can't pronounce that last name for some reason. Uh, Nathan Fillion is in this one. Rosario Dawson, Sean Astin, and and the wetter, uh, the wettest former Jedi of them all, <laughs> Matt Lanter uh, from, Clo- <laughs> from from Clone Wars. He played Anakin. Nice. He played Anakin. Uh, cool. It was nominated for one award, but it didn't win. So I'm moving on to the fun facts, uh, which may or may not be fun. Take it away, Ryan. And we got a couple of them here for you. Uh, this animated film was based off the Throne of Atlantis storyline. No it's shit! A- <laughs> Joe was a 2013 comic book crossover event between the Justice League and Aquaman series in the New 52. Great place to have an origin story. Mm-hmm. Uh, next bit, uh, John Henry Irons, a.k.a. Steel from The Man, uh, the Man of Iron, uh, has an appearance in the... F- Henry and... Ah, hitting an Atlantean with a sledgehammer during the final battle scene in Metropolis. This is a slight nod towards the of how Steel originated by being saved by Superman while h- attempting to help out in a fight against Doomsday. So, nice little nod there, there. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, if I, if, I, if, if, I, if I may ask Ryan, uh, if I may ask Ryan, where was Shaq in this movie? I wanted him to play Steel. I was just, I was just asking if you could ask that. <laughs> He was, he, I don't fucking know. He was, he was, he was dancing with a fucking cat and shaking his shoulders. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, uh, while fighting off the trenchers, Aquaman's right hand is bitten. In the comics, Aquaman actually loses his right hand while trying to save his son and gains a hook and or prosthetic hand. I feel like that would have, that might have been just a bit too on the nose for movie to be like, oh, he's king of the seas with a hook on his goddamn hands. <laughs> but, you can, but, but Ryan, you can't argue that in the de- or in the uh, animated series, Justice League animated series, he looked pretty badass with that hook. Yeah, he did. That's fair. Oh, I, well, I haven't actually seen the animated series as of yet. Oh, that's a cardinal sin. I'm gonna I got to do points. it. I know. Dear I'm, God. Getting, I'm getting the look. I'm getting the look. I got to do it. I know. I'm looking at you, too, from... Uh, from- <laughs> Damn, digital looks. <laughs> digital yeah. looks. Are... <laughs> R- Ryan, she's a keeper. She's giving you looks for not seeing the Justice League cartoon. That's a keeper. I, I know, man. It's an all timer, man. I'm trying. Damn. Um. um so uh, before we dive into this week's movie, uh, let's do some initial thoughts real quick, uh, gentlemen. What, what do you think going into this one? Robbie, take it away, sir. Yeah. Um. I I love these animated movies. Um. The new 52 storyline, I'm not, like, super into, but I, I like how they can contain this within the universe, how the went into this movie, and it, and it factors into why Orm has the, um, the, the wanting to do what he does because of what happened in that movie. Um, and it features the Justice League, you know, the, the right way, the Justice League, not garbage live action movie um uh and it was it was just it was really well done like origin story and factored it in to the justice league at the same time which obviously they had a comic book storyline to go off of but i thought it was a good job um Mm -hmm. yeah those are my initial thoughts on it uh ryan same question to you um, i i am a huge fan of the animated series uh of course first and foremost Um, personally think this is one of the weaker entries. Uh, it didn't hold my interest as much and it's possible that it did it, that I did it a disservice by watching it pretty much the day after going to see the live action, um, because I was just (laughs) kind of automatically comparing and contrasting them, uh, as opposed to just being in the movie. Um, but I, it didn't do a whole bunch to really pull me in. There was a lack of characterization in the animated series that would really shown through in the live action that made me also not as engaged. So mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't as great. You know, I'm gonna agree with Ryan a little bit. I don't hate this to be by any means, but it does feel a little bit flat compared to the original movie we saw, which I, I feel like is gonna paint us in a corner here, Ryan. Um, I'm just. <laughs> But here's the thing. Here's Spoilers the thing. for my opinion on this movie. Here's the, here's, <laughs> here's the thing, though. I feel like there's an anime with a really tight budget, 
because it's a very short film with a lot of stuff it's trying to do. I think it's trying to do way too much in such a short amount of time. I think yeah. the live action movie can get away with doing more stuff because it's such a bigger movie, but I think they're both trying to do too much and this one hurts more because of it. Mm. That's 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 a that's a fair criticism. That is. Yeah. Um, with that, gentlemen, I have a synopsis here for you. And I don't know if it's better or worse than the last one, but at least it's a synopsis. That's all I can say. <laughs> it is a synopsis. <laughs> all right, and here we go. A disturbance in the sea, namely attacked subs, causes Cyborg to investigate some deep sea shenanigans. He is ganked by some freaky fish guys and has to consult the League for help. But you might be asking, where's this Aqua guy? We turn to Arthur, who is talking to lobsters in bars in a bar between bar fights. Yes. He's abducted by Mira. Mira. Uh, such uh, uh, much like the live action film, to help setting uh, to help set the feud, but to settle settling. Sorry, uh, the feud between White Atlanteans and everyone else. Uh, as Arthur is prepped to, to meet the world of Atlantis, Trenchmen arrive to kill Arthur. Luckily, the Justice League has finished discussing their irrelevant subplots and have arrived to save him. Meanwhile, Prince Orm is tired of listening to his mom and kills her. Take that, Mom! You can't tell me not to subjugate the surface world in a stupid costume. <laughs> Prince Orm then puts on a stupid costume and moves forward with his plans to subjugate the surface world. <laughs> uh, after fighting a Cthulhu and letting Superman do most of the work, Arthur and the League give chase to the Atlantean army. Orm, now the Brotian masturbator, has led the <laughs> army to Metropolis, where they're going to make you wish flood insurance was part of your plan. Uh, the League arrives... And Brotion Boy proceeds to bitch slap the hell out of all of them. But Arthur is the main character and is immune to the power of the Brotion. Also, he has some fake news to publicize and ruin the Brotion's reputation for pussy grabbing. I mean, mother slain. Uh, <laughs> Arthur saves the day and is promoted to uh, from Arthur Man to Aquaman and King <laughs> of Atlantis. He and Mira uh, make out in front of the armies to celebrate their victory. Because that's what you do when you win a war, damn it! <laughs> uh, you make out with the nearest redhead before all the other combatants. Uh, the League goes to Atlantis to watch the coronation where they openly discuss their subplots once again and give uh, Aquaman his garbage name. Tune in next week to see if any of these subplots will matter. Spoiler, no. No, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm personally interested in seeing whether or not Cyborg and that doctor lady actually make it work. Ooh, I, think they, yeah. I think they are a thing in the comics. I'm not, man. I'm really not. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay, so I don't think I have it as one of my questions. Wait, I think I do. Never mind. I'm not going to get to it now. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it later. <laughs> um, so, guys, now that we've talked about it, what do you guys think? What, 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 what's, what's the thoughts? <laughs> um, like, I enjoyed the movie, and I, I feel like your guys' is. Uh, criticisms that you made before are very fair compared to the other movies that have come out mm -hmm. in this. Um, and I know we're going to talk about whether the Justice League needed to be in this or not. Um, it like the the parts in down like in Atlantis between Orm and his. Uh, was interesting when you compare it to uh, this movie where he actually loves his mother and this, you know, he kills her. <laughs> it was just kind of like, I hadn't watched this since it came out and I rewatched it because we we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, and having like black Manta be his right hand man already. I thought was interesting. Um, I mean, it, it kind of cuts out that backstory and saves it for yeah. another time if you really want it. Yeah. Which I think they they had to because you know of the runtime and there was a lot of stuff jammed in what is it seventy minutes maybe maybe uh, <laughs> yeah, so so uh, not not to cut you off but that actually yeah. that confused the hell out of me because I'm not sure what black man like who black is from a canonical standpoint like yeah. is he Atlantean is he a human with Atlantean Actually, so, like who actually is so I've seen it in different ways. Um, I think I've even seen it where he's related to Aquaman in some capacity. <laughs> I don't think there's a consistent thread for who he is. I think it just depends on which continuity you're in. Okay, so he's some guy in a black man's outfit. Gotcha. 
Okay. Because <laughs> if I remember right, I okay. So I remember if I remember from Young Justice, he is for sure related to Aqua Lad in that show. Well, in that show, he's Calderon's father, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's that. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, so, so, so Black Manta's a very weird character in that he, mm, he's one of the main villains of, like, the, 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 uh, the League of, Legion, Legion of Doom. That's what I was thinking. Legion of Doom. He's one of those guys. But he's never really known for anything outside of that. He's that guy with the cool helmet, but he never really does anything outside of that that I know. Like, you'll see him in Aquaman stuff here and there, sure. But... Like, there's no big storyline saying, this is the origin of Black Manta, or this is when Black Manta takes over Manhattan, or anything. There's none of that. There's none of that. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. oh, hey, I'm going to antagonize Aquaman this episode. It's cool. Yeah. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, speaking out of my asshole, and there's comic friends out there who are going to burn down my house, bring it on, <laughs> motherfuckers, bring it on. Hey, as long as they fill the mailbag, I'm fine. I'm, yeah, I'm I, I, that's really what I'm looking with, for, honestly. <laughs> just fill the mailbag with uh, hate mail. Uh, please, please, please. Be, be like, uh, be like, excuse me, but Black Manta actually <laughs> saved all of Japan one time. <laughs> I'm be like, sure Whoa. to cite your sources in your hate mail, folks. I didn't want cited sources, but I'm not going to believe you. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Black Manta, though, so uh, Orm and Black Manta, I guess. Question: Do you think their actions and motivations are better or worse here than in the live action film? 100 percent worse i i like it, it was one of the big things that threw me out of the that threw me out of the animated uh movie because here like like in the in the movie like in the, in the live action and we didn't get a chance to talk about it yesterday but in the live action film like the character arc from orm's perspective particularly on why he hates aqua man is a really good story it's like like the fact that this dude exists meant that according to atlantean law so it's like because yeah. you exist i lost my mom i instantly hate you he was also an evil asshole had some real drive to him against arthur's character and when all of it was resolved and arthur became king like he had that moment when he when he looked at his little brother and he said, "When you're ready, let's talk." It's like 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 so like I, I wanna I wanna actually build that family connection and that was a really really good character arc to see and like how he was able to be brought back from the brink once his mom actually stepped out and said, "Yo, you're you're fucking up, kid. I, I love both of you. Why are you why are you thinking this?" Um, but in the animated, it's just. Fuck you, mom! I'll do what I want. Stab! I'm like, what the fuck? Why? He's just an asshole now. It's just like... Well, to be fair, Ryan, in this one, you know, his father got or was killed by what happened in the previous movie. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying it's better, but his motivation was he blames the judge. While Elena is like, no, it was Dark Side, you dummy. So. That's fair. That that yeah. is fair. I wish, I wish, delved into a little deeper. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but yeah, like, cause, cause like the initial, like the initial reading that I got off was just like, man, fuck it. I want to, I want to fight the surface world. Yeah. They're assholes. I'm gonna fight. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And, and his mom is like, no, we need peace. We need to fucking bridge the gap between the surface and the sea because it's all one world. And, and, Good peaceful ruler talking is like nah, fuck all that and stabs her. I'm like, get the. F <laughs> see, see, I think that's a problem that a lot of people think that. I, I just kind of checked out. I kind of checked out when that happened. I was just like, nah. Well, and I, and I think what you're saying there is a problem people perceive the Marvel movies to have, where you need to see all the movies to understand what's happening. But Marvel, you don't necessarily need to see every movie. Maybe the like, if you're seeing Captain America three, probably see Captain America's one and two. But you don't, yeah. need to, you don't need to see Iron Man. You don't need to see Avengers. You can just see the Captain America movies and still have a good time. Um, whereas this one, it, whereas this one, it, it it feels like it should be standalone because it's Aquaman's story, but there's so much other things going on outside of it, that and it doesn't yeah. really fill you in enough on those. And I guess that's our fault a little bit for watching Out of Order to try to keep up with the, the, the release schedule of stuff. But, I mean, it's still one of those things where it's like, 
I feel like if you were gonna re- reference other movies, especially these, I guess I could argue less well known, less popular animated films because they don't get theater releases, they don't get the advertising budget. They're just kind of released for the hardcore fans. Um, a little bit of like ten minutes of backstory, five minutes of backstory to kind of fill us in the casuals what's going on. It wouldn't have been un- it wouldn't have been uncalled for. Right. Yeah. Um, I would say for this one, I think it's not so much that Orms is worse, but it's just sped up and then it, it, it escalates quicker than it should. Like, I yeah. feel like the first part of it up until when he kills his mom is a lot like the film. It just sped up really, really fast. And then when he kills his mom, it just escalates through a different direction than fighting Aquaman right away. So it is worse overall, but I think it started off more or less the same. It just wasn't quite as fleshed out as it could have been. Yeah, Black... no, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Whereas Black Manta seems non-existent until you have that monologue where he gets eaten by a shark. <laughs> 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 You've got him monologuing. How dare you? <laughs> um. Okay. So, uh, we saw some really cool trenchmen in the in the previous movie. Uh, what did you guys think of the trenchmen in this movie? Eh. And <laughs> they were they were they were. Kind they, of like merman ninjas as opposed yeah. to nightmare, which yeah. <laughs> is a downgrade. I, I, I personally I didn't have a, a problem with them, um, but it also took me out of the idea because I thought that the trench was supposed to be like unconquerable and like you kind of have to write the trench off because they're all bestial like madmen and you can't really deal with them. But Orm's got them as his private fucking ninjutsu guys and like yeah okay fine. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it, it does kind of slap around a little bit that it, that the trench isn't as, as big a deal as we thought it was. Mm-hmm. Like and, I, I, I prefer the nightmare fuel guys. Those guys are terrifying. <laughs> I, I think most I, of us do. <laughs> I think they kind of reminded me of the the Putty Patrol in Power Rangers. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> they did. Oh my god, they were absolutely the putties. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I. I uh, I agree. Uh, Aquaman live action way better trench guys. Actually, actually, going on that a little bit, I think the designs of most of this film, with some exceptions, feel a bit flat compared to the live action movie. Not bad all around, not bad per se, but they just feel a little flat compared to what was fleshed out in the, the live action film. Yeah, I'd agree with that, and it's uh, to that I wouldn't fault the movie. No, because of it, like years earlier. And it's working on a smaller budget, whereas James Wan had, like, all the money on the planet to throw at the movie. Yeah. And he <laughs> desperately wanted to make uh, a, a stamp on the DC universe. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to be mad at him for saying, like, oh, well, it wasn't as stylized as the guy that did it two years later than you with four times your budget. It's like, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> You, you, you could argue maybe Warner Brothers is misappropriating their money a little bit, but I think it was still well spent in Aquaman, but I do think they really should invest more in their anime and stuff. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they're, they're, like, there's not as big of a, of a of a market in anime. That that's why they don't throw as much money. Yeah, in. unfortunately. Very unfortunate, yeah. Um, okay, so I have a problem with Orm in the final battle here. And I think it was evident in my in my synopsis, but I'll, I'll bring it up here. What is the power scaling of Orm? How powerful is this supposed to be? Because it felt really inconsistent. Like, he could slap around Aquaman without any problem. But when... Uh, but, uh, sorry, sorry, Superman. But when Aquaman comes up, he's like, oh man, I can't handle this shit. And it's like, he could slap the whole league down with one hand. And it's like, how is he doing this? He's never been this powerful anywhere else I've seen him. What's going on? Yeah, like, Superman, it made sense because he had a fucking magic trident and I was just like, oh, magic, yep, man. Magic, gotcha. yep. <laughs> But then, um, but then Wonder Woman seemed a bit weird to me. What's that? But Wonder Woman being slapped around so easily, that felt a bit weird. It did. It did. Like like all the other guys. Like, like you could say that I, I, nobody's I, I, fucking used to fighting underwater, which is fair. But, but they were on the surface, though, yeah, it's during the, the final Justice battle. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the Justice League. They, they sh- and, and, and my like, biggest, yeah, ar- especially because they're on land, yeah. And my biggest argument is the Flash. The Flash should have destroyed him with his fucking speed force. Yeah, Grant, I, Grant, Grant, they won't dive into that, but still. I think, like, 
obviously they were just trying to make it so that you know Aquaman was the the main focus there. Yeah. But with it being a magic trident, you know, with that electrical like lightning shit coming out of it or whatever, maybe you know yeah. it's just too powerful and they didn't know what to do with it. And Aquaman being the same and being able to control the trident, it doesn't affect him. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it was. I mean, it's like you have all these incredibly powerful people and he's just bitch slapping him, which would never happen, but I get it. I mean, it, it felt like, and this is just my opinion, it felt like Dragon Ball Z where you have Piccolo and Krillin getting slapped around. You got Vegeta almost making it, but like, nope, sorry, you're getting kicked in the dick. And then all of a sudden, here comes Goku. I'm going to save the day without even trying. Here I am. Yeah. yeah, especially when you take it into context that Krillin is literally supposed to be the strongest human on the planet. And he... <laughs> That is so sad that, he, that he's the strongest. It human. really is. <laughs> Poor my boy Krillin, man. He gets zero respect. Man. <laughs> we need to do a Dragon Ball podcast at some point. That'd be fun. Um, okay, next one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, I, I wrote this in a, in a very sassy way, so I apologize if it sounds bad. If Mira is so great, why doesn't she just take the damn throne for herself and let Aquaman bum around all he wants? <laughs> <laughs> Live action or animated? Why doesn't she just do it? She seems capable enough. <laughs> she's not of royal blood. So no. <laughs> well, no, she's part of the Scottish uh, <laughs> Scottish Aquaman. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> the redhead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... yeah. Think uh, so. I, I think for for the live action, I think she's definitely smart and empathetic <laughs> for it, but I don't think she has like. The temperament for it. She makes a fantastic queen. I would 100% say that she is a perfect match for Arthur and, like, her and the fucking power couples that end all power couples. So I love that shit. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that her by herself would be... Would, like, I think that her rule would be just, but it would probably have a few, like, blind spots in it. Just, like, in terms of, like, I don't know, maybe military capability or strategy or shit like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Robert? Uh, I, I think it's just, you know, for the story's sake, you know, Arthur's of royal blood, so to speak, or whatever. I think she could do it, but like Ryan was saying, it's, it's better for them as a couple just because... It's they're such a badass pairing. They really are. They really are. Thing and yeah. Jesus. So waterbender. <laughs> yeah. Best. I don't know what they actually call. What do they call it in DC Comics? They call it some. I mean, I've always magic. I've always heard them refer to it as water, magic. So. Yeah. So they should call it waterbending because that's what it is. They really would. I don't know if that's copyright. <laughs> they'll, they'll have to find that out if it's trademarked or something. Oh yeah, I guess it could be. Interesting. She yeah. hit Orm with that damn like air vacuum in like in the midst of the sea that was, was pretty slick film. I was like that's beast mode <laughs> like I'm gonna bend all the water away from you and plummet <laughs> you to the ground and then hit you with the water I'm like shit <laughs> like yeah she's, she's, she's boss she's boss mode <laughs> alright so this movie was obviously not just an Aquaman movie it also had some Justice League in there which is why half my questions are about the Justice League so here we go uh, question number one. This is what I was going to get to earlier. Do you think Clark and Diane make a good couple? Why or why not? Hate it. Hate it? <laughs> I, ha I hate it too. I, oh my Allegra god. Allegra like, hates it. Here, here's, just, go, go ahead, go ahead. I just, it's just like, you know, Superman and Lois Lane have been a thing for forever. And I, I get they wanted to try to switch it up with somebody that has a similar experience as him or they're, you know, outsiders, they're not true, you know, humans. I get that, but it's, I don't know, it just feels weird, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, here's, here's my take, Robbie. Yeah, I, here's my take. I don't know how to explain that. I get... I've, I've always seen uh, Wonder Woman paired up with Batman, and I felt like that made more sense. Oh, to me. And Justice League, yep. Yeah. yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah. That's good. I don't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> um,. But with with the Superman, yeah, I feel like Lois Lane's kind of his go-to. I don't know who else you could really pair with him that would make more sense because those two just have always worked throughout comics history. They're yeah. probably the oldest couple and the longest-lasting one outside of maybe Mr. Fantastic and, and uh, Sue Storm. Well, mm -hmm. 
Superman started in what, 1939? And yeah. I think they've been a couple basically since the start. So that's a long, that's a long history. It's pretty crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, Ryan, where, where do you fall on this one? Yeah. Like I, 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 I applaud their, their want to do something new, but yeah, you're, you're kind of fucking with the classic at that point. Like, like the, the, the scene where Lois, kind of like r- like runs into them on their date was oh so awkward cringe. Yeah. it was just the cringiest thing i was just like like you can you can tell lois is kind of angling and then diana's like, no we're on a date please go away i'm like oh my god this is the worst <laughs> lord have mercy yeah so i mean i I've seen iterations like uh, like the Injustice series where after Lois's death, oh, he hooks yeah. up with with yep. Wonder Woman, and that I could be okay with. Bring his descent into madness. That I could be fine with. Yeah. But yeah, no. As long as Lois is actually fucking alive, then yeah, that's how it should be. Um, the next league member I want to bring up is uh, Shazam. Uh, does Shazam in this film make you more or less excited for the upcoming Shazam film? <laughs> I f- I'm going to go here real quick. I felt like he was a little annoying in this film. And by a little, I mean, God damn, can you shut the fuck up for five minutes? <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's annoying in this movie. About Shazam. Cause I think it could be a super fun movie, but like in this, I just felt like he was in the way. In the way, annoying. It's just and, like, and, why are you... And, and, like, I get it. He's a kid. I totally get it. But I feel like they might have been trying too hard to make him, like, the comedic relief here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, yeah. like, it, it's not outside of his character. Like, it's definitely 100%, like, how he's supposed to be. But it's just like... <sighs> Okay. Man, come on. Like, like we've, already got, we've already got comedic relief with... Uh, uh, this version of Hal Jordan riffing off Barry Allen, riffing off everybody. Uh, I have no like, problem with Green Lantern in this movie. I thought Green Lantern was fine. Oh man, I, I have no problem with them at all. Like, like I, I love the comedy that they bring to it, and like Nathan Fillion can always voice Green Lantern. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's my guy. But, man. Oh. Like, like we have enough of that. You know, we have comedy with those two guys riffing off everybody. So to then throw a twelve-year-old child into the mix who's only there because I'm in fucking nigh invincible. Shazam! <sighs> no, <Nah. laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> like I, I'm like Shazam was never like my my big my my most favorite character um, in the DC pantheon. Um, I didn't know too much about him. I'm mostly excited. The Rock is Black Adam at the very end, but that yeah, they better do that. Like, 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 we're, 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 we'll get the act where fucking The Rock just yells Shazam, and I'm like, yes. I was okay. gonna say we haven't actually seen any trailer stuff for him, with him in it yet. I'm wondering if they're trying to hide that or if he's not going to be in this first one. Well, he supposedly is. he's not going to be in it, which I'm like, what? What's the what's the point of not having him at least teased in it? Because yeah, no, like, like they, they already they already like teased his involvement in the the franchise. I like we're good singer. We're good. Like I, I would yeah. stake money on it. We're gonna see him in an after credit scene. He's gonna show. I'd be like, hey, and that's gonna be it. Like I'm like, good, good. I, I'd, love to, I'd love to see the Rock yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah. on after credits. Let's see <laughs> if we can get him on here. Let's do it, <laughs> bro. We don't have nearly enough money. <laughs> Uh, well, he's just passing through town. It's fine. Just be like, hey, man, hook up a mic. Just pop on in for a minute. Okay, so guys, you heard it first. If you want to get The Rock on the After Credits podcast, please visit our Patreon and donate <laughs> as much as you fucking can. If you want The Rock on All this podcast, way. tweet this podcast to him at The Rock. Just just do it. <laughs> Make it happen, people. All the tweets. Uh, okay, does the leak feel like a necessary element to this film, or do you feel like they take up too much of the runtime? Uh, Robbie, you brought this up earlier, um, like that w- that we were going to get into this, and I think, like, when 
the ser- the animated movie series and how it is all about the Justice League and constantly adding people to it, it makes sense that they're so prominent in it because it's a Justice League movie where they're introducing Aquaman, and I get it. But I feel like, especially after seeing and being like the good story that they were telling there, like they missed out on so much opportunity of delving into the Atlantean storyline and giving Arthur some more character or fleshing out Mira some more, making Orm not seem like a whiny little bitch because they had to fit in all of these storylines about the League. So I would have preferred it if it was just an Aquaman movie and we got that as opposed to, oh, fucking Justice League has has all these side things going on. Oh, fuck it, let's go to Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, felt like it was just so much stuff, you know. It just yeah, yeah. they they could have they could have done without it. Uh, I'm I'm thinking here, and uh, I, I think the league definitely. I feel like they take up a little bit too much time. I think you could have probably even done like some of the league, but not all of them. Um, like I would have been fine keeping Green Lantern and Superman, maybe. That makes sense. I don't think you need Flash at all. I don't think you need um uh, Shazam at all. You could probably even do it with Batman, even though he's he's fun. I don't think you need him in this. I think a couple members finding Aquaman versus the whole team needing to be here would definitely feel a little bit simpler. But I think the yeah. real problem is just that they made this movie in such a way... They, they, they went for this storyline in particular because I don't think that the studio had the faith that Aquaman could carry this movie by himself. That's I, fair. And, I, and yeah. I, th- I think they felt like the League had to be here to make this film even watchable. But the live-action movie does prove you don't need that. I do think that movie is also bloated, but at the same time, though, it all bloats into itself. But it all loops into itself, and it works. This one, it feels like it's coming from other stuff and going into other things, and it's like, okay, this is fine, but y'all could have trimmed it down a little bit, and it would have worked just fine. Yeah. I like, I, in, I like... As opposed to the live action, which could have done with a shorter runtime, I could have, I for the animated film, I could keep the runtime exactly the same, but just remove a good portion of the League stuff and flesh out, out the Atlantean storyline more. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't need less runtime. It just need. I just, I want those bits more fleshed out than just... Borg hook up with this doctor or won't he type <laughs> but I mean it, it, it comes back to what they're doing with these animated movies is you know it's either Justice League or it's Batman you know <laughs> yeah because that's, that's sadly. All, sadly but the reason they're doing that is because that's what sells and they, they don't think that these characters can carry a movie by themselves whether it's Aquaman or Green Lantern or, or Flash and you know guys like you and me would love that, like where it's their own story in one of these animated movies, but unfortunately, just that's that's not the case. So you have to have a Aquaman origins with the Justice League, so people will watch it. And, and you're not yeah. wrong. I'm it's, sure. I'm, I'm sure that Aquaman's going to get some more play, though. Oh after, yeah, absolutely. After the yeah. success, but at the box office, I'm sure they're going to get some. He's going to get some more play. Absolutely. Um, and, and to go off to your point, Robbie, uh, you're not wrong. In fact, the live action movies did the same thing back in the day, where it was all Superman movies and then all Batman movies yep. and then nothing for yep. a while, and then it's like, oh hey, we're gonna try to Justice League, and here we are now. Yep. So, no, uh... yeah, S- similar situation. Um, two more questions, and then we'll move on to our next segment here. Uh, so, question number one here: Why is the Flash even here? <laughs> <laughs> I love the Flash. He's my favorite DC hero. But why is he here? In the comics at this time, he was busy dealing with Gorilla Grodd. And here he barely contributes uh, anything to the story. So why is he here? I love Gorilla Grodd. We should talk about him. <laughs> we should. Gorilla Grodd's Great pretty fucking villain. cool. <laughs> yeah. I, love his, I love his appearance in the TV show. Like It's so understated, but when he shows up, it's like this big event. and It's so good. Yeah. yeah. A telepath. Telepathic gorilla, like, how awesome is that? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like you, you wonder where we were saving our budget for this season? It's for this guy, uh, yeah. not for street sharks. It's for God. Money well spent. <laughs> Money well spent. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thing 
which is kind of kind of unfortunate because, like like you, Aaron, I I love the Flash. He is uh, one of my favorites behind Batman. Um, mm-hmm. And I love everything he's in, but in this movie, he's just like, you're not even doing anything. You don't have to be here. You know, <laughs> go fight so, a gorilla. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, go. Go fight one of your rogues. Uh, Ryan, where where you sit on this one? Yeah, I do, like honestly, I it, it's one of the thing. It's one of the uh, one of the many unnecessary things that didn't have to be here. Like especially if in the comics he's not even there to deal with the Atlantean stuff. Yeah, there's literally no point to him. I mean, Orm smacks his ass around too. Like like during during the final uh, action sequence, so it's just like why, why, sir? I mean. It- I feel like maybe his one reason for being here is to have banter with Green Lantern, but Batman and Cyborg can do that just as easily without him, so I don't see that being a reason to keep him. So, yeah, he's he's one of the cuts that I would unfortunately make, even though, like I said, he's the best DC hero, hands down. Speed Force. Uh, next question, uh, and last one. How does this Batman rank on your list of Batman portrayals? Ooh, this is my question. Well, Robbie, take it away, please, sir. Are we talking about animated guys? Uh, let's start there, the and if we want to expand it, we can. Okay. Um, I personally dislike Jason Amara as Batman, the voice. He's not, really? as good, he's not as good as Mark Hamill, without question. That's the top one. Well, you mean Kevin Conroy. Mark Hamill does the Joker. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Fuck, I got the name. It's, it's yeah, okay, yeah. it's okay. Uh Second, burn, behind, burn my nerd badge. I lost all my street cred. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You just got confused. He tripped right and now. lost all his experience. Uh, <laughs> number two is Bruce Greenwood, who voices Batman in Under the Red Hood, as he, well he's as really he's really good. Yeah, as well as he also does it in the newer one that just came came out this past year, Batman Gotham by Gaslight. How was that? Is, I like, didn't other see world that. Story. It was it was pretty good. Like it's you know it's a, it's not a, a continuity story. It's just like a one off, and it's it's kind of weird because of the the time frame it's set in, but mm-hmm. it's still pretty cool. But um, he's second for me. Uh, and then who else am I missing? Uh, There's that one show, The Batman. I don't remember who voiced him, but that was all right. That was pretty decent. Oh, it was uh, the Batman. Is that yeah. who you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. I can't remember that guy's name, but I like him better. But I don't know. Jason O'Mara just doesn't do it for me. Like, he just – he doesn't sound like Batman. And maybe I, that's just because we got spoiled with Kevin Conroy for so many years. Mm-hmm. I think – It just al- sounds off. I yeah. think also I need to hear Bruce, like, him being Bruce to get a better grounding in the, on his Batman. Cause I that's think true. Because he, he has a tough – when yeah. you hear both, it lets both of them work well together. If you hear just the one, it's like, okay, well, that's fine. It's just him, but, like, what else has he got? So, yeah. Like, Kevin Conroy mastered that so well. Like, anyone else, like, uh, Christian Bale tried to do the Kevin Conroy style of two different voices, basically, but yep. Kevin Conroy is perfect for it. Yep. He was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100% agree. Um, I I like the kind of the, the, the snarky Batman. And that uh, this one's going for, but yeah, I think we, we we need to see more of his portrayal, especially as Bruce, before mm-hmm. we put him over Kevin Con. I mean, fucking Justice League Doom, that was it. That was the end all be all. Yeah, like Kevin Conroy just doing a masterclass on this whole thing. Oh, so, was, was Conroy also in Doom? I have to rewatch that again. That was so yeah, good. that was so yeah. good. He was Batman they, in Doom. They had the original guys from the Justice League cartoon well as had Nathan Fillion as Green Lantern, so excellent. Man, so, I, I haven't Superman seen Doom was so done long, I have to check Bay. it out again. Also, <laughs> I forgot about two Batman guys that also voiced in The Dark Knight Returns. It's by RoboCop himself, Peter Weller. Oh, yeah? Oh, boy. Yeah, and it's actually, he does a pretty good older Bruce, I think. Um, and an underrated one is, if you guys remember the animated movie uh, Justice league on two earths i do remember that yes it's william baldwin william baldwin a baldwin brother did bruce in that or uh, batman i'll have to rewatch that because i don't remember that at all yeah and he actually does a pretty good job i wouldn't put him it still goes kevin conroy uh uh 
Red Hood for me, but yeah. he's he's up there. Yeah. Yeah, Red Hood. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm on. I'm, I'm on the same, same boat as you. I think. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's, that's our official Batman rankings. Tune in. Uh, what months from now when we actually do the month of Batman, whenever that is. Mm. The Christopher Nolan movies. I can talk about them for hours. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Um, with that, let's move on to the next segment. Mailbag shout out real quick. Uh, if you want to send us messages, you can go to Tumblr, Twitter, or Facebook. Any comments you leave there will get YouTube comments as well. You can also go to our email. Ryan, what is that email? That is uh, Flash needs to be chasing a gorilla at Gmail. <laughs> I mean, sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Damn. That is evacstation at gmail.com. I want to chase a gorilla too. Um <laughs> But yeah, go to that email. Uh, you can also uh, go to your podcast platform of choice. You're already here listening, so hopefully you're there now. But if you're not, you can go to those as well and all that stuff. Um, so we're going to close out this episode with who wore it better, uh, the live action film or the animated film. I feel like we've already kind of painted ourselves in a corner, but I feel like we still should talk about it anyway. So, Robbie, you're the guest. Kick us off. What do you think? Uh, live action, by far. Mm-hmm. Just all the all the set pieces. Uh, Ocean Master looked better, um, or or uh, Black Manta looked better. Uh, I even think when Momoa got the actual, that orange and green looked better than it did in an animated too. No lie, I was worried about how he looked when he stepped stepped out and was posing on like in like in like in the waterfall. It was just like. Yeah. That's a little much, but then when I saw him in action, I was like, yeah. actually, no, I take <laughs> That's, Yeah, I was too, man. I, w- I was too, and then, yeah, action, it looked great, so. I agree, I agree. That, that's pretty good. Uh, any thoughts you want to before before you let Ryan take a shot at it? No, that's it. All right, Ryan, what do you got? What do you got? Uh, well, yeah, uh, like, well, we we've we've been leaning towards that the entire like this entire episode, but uh, I think visually, I think story wise, um, this uh, the live action kind of blows it out of the water, um, and it's it's a good thing, as like like they were able to improve on a good formula and a good basis. Uh, they stay got to focus a lot on Arthur's storyline, making from a really compelling story um, with great characterization. I love the characterization of Orm and Arthur. Character drives that put them in conflict without either one of them just being unnecessarily just a shitty per- person. Um, so I really liked watching that develop. Um, the trench just fucking mind-blowing. Um, and while it did have a couple of unnecessary things, I don't think it had as many unnecessary things as the animated version, uh, for the, for the re- which were there because of the reasons that we've already discussed. Still, I would put, uh, the live action over the animated 100%. All right. I'll step up. So I love the flash and I love, uh, the, the monologuing before his death for Black Manta and I love the putty <laughs> monsters. And I think that makes the animation much, much... No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> the... like, I, was, I, was, I was like, okay, let's, let's see him actually walk this back. Let's see him. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Two things that the live-action movie does that put it ahead of the animated movie by miles. Number one, Willem Dafoe. If you put him yeah. in your movie, you, you got my attention. And then uh, the entire moment from the storm at sea with the trench monsters all the way to waking up in the earth's core that whole bit there to me personally is better than the entire animated film you don't even need the rest of the live action movie that part (laughs) alone is so damn well done i will watch that again and again (laughs) such a spectacle it was awesome (laughs) oh so so yeah I, i think it's unfortunate that that uh this animated film does not win out but uh, it's nice to be able to say that after this run of movies we've done, Ryan, that a live action film, c- it can win out and do and no. by, by miles. It's really good. It like, it, Hey, they, they, they can be taught apparently shit. They, 
they can they can actually learn. Warner Brothers kept their hands off the wheel, and like, okay, James Wan, we're kind of in you know a tailspin here. Can you pull us up? He's like, I got this. <laughs> I'm still kind of blown away that that they didn't receive a nod for visual graphics at the at the awards. I'm I- still blown away. I'm still blown away James Wan did this. I mean, he's known for those smaller, uh, like, horror films. This is way outside his wheelhouse, and he did such a good job with it. Yeah. that's It's pretty incredible to think about, you know, going from The the Conjuring and Insidious to, to doing this. It's not a trajectory I would have ever selected. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we had a uh, trauma director go to Guardians of the Galaxy, and look what happened there. So That, that is true. <laughs> Um, yeah, and now we'll see him on Suicide Squad. So that'll be fun. <laughs> he will save the squad, Ryan. He will. He will. Save I just want him. I just wish he was doing Guardians. Oh no, no, I agree. Guardians That's Three is way more important. That's another. But but you know, it's, it's another podcast. <laughs> um, if if I had to rank this movie, Ryan, I would give this movie a strong silver for for the Aquaman live action. I think it's super good. Not the best, not the worst. It's it's really good. There are ways you can improve it. I don't think it's the... I, I, I'm hard-pressed to say it's the best DC film either because uh, there's also Wonder Woman to consider as well, which... Yeah, which has that's a question. Because Wonder Woman's good with action and it's got more meaning to it. It's just not as fun as this. Yeah, that's that. That's my that's my whole <laughs> dilemma. Like, I, yeah. will, I will never tell you that Wonder... that this movie was a better cinematic, like, piece than Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman... Wonder Woman was just amazing and one of the best movies that they put out to date. Um, but this was just fun, like nonstop, put on the gas. You're just constantly smiling and laughing the whole time watching this crazy ass shit. So, yeah, I, I will be, I, I will have judgment and we'll, I, I, I hope we come back to it and bring it up when we do Wonder Woman. Um, when we film Wonder Woman, when we record Wonder Woman. When we recorded uh, Wonder Woman, yes. <laughs> when we recorded Wonder Woman, yes. Um, I, you, you can hear my opinion on whether or not it was, was this good fucking um, time. I don't care. I, 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 I was, I'll say this much, Ryan. Uh, if we're going to compare the movies right now, just as a quick little dirty comparison, um... The third act of this movie holds out better than the third act of Wonder Woman, where she fights yes. the, the, the boss monster guy. Yeah, that's, Th- fair. that's This fair. one is more consistent with the rest of the film, and I think this yep. one lets it hold out much better. Yeah, that's very true. That's very fair. Um, so, yeah, I think we've covered Aquaman and Wet Week completely well. Uh, let's go dry off and do some Shazam next week, Ryan. Yep, Shazam! Um, before we go, uh, Robbie, we want to thank you for coming on. Is there anything else you want to add before we uh, before we uh, close out? Yeah, I actually just wanted to, to mention, I thought, you know, going into Jason Momoa being cast as Aquaman, I wasn't sure what to expect because, you know, we know him as Cal Drogo and, you know, a few other roles. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I wasn't sure if he'd be, you know, Aquaman, but damn did he kill this role you know and i just i can't play it i i yeah, i i 100 percent agree i love that i love that my new definition of aquaman is no longer the 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 the, the blue eye like the yep, blue-eyed blonde. blonde haired like square chinned like the king of atlantis no it's <laughs> he's a, it's a fucking it's a Pacific Islander dude with long hair and a scraggly beard that just looks like a drunk uncle that throws axes for the fuck of it. <laughs> yes! yes. That's, that's Aquaman for me now. I'm so glad he's in it. Yep. I, I gotta say, I thought he he was better as a Lobo kind of character, but he pulled yeah. this off really well. So c- congrats to you, man. You, you've you proven that typecasting is, is a thing of the past, or should be. So. Yep. <laughs> Um, yeah. With, with that, uh, let me give a quick shout out to the mailbag one more time. Uh, you can reach out to us at Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook. You can also get to us at evacstation at gmail.com. You can also follow us on your platforms of choice for podcasts. Next week, Ryan and I, and maybe a guest, I don't know yet, we haven't scheduled that far ahead, uh, we'll be doing Shazam. Uh, and I think it's the only one we're doing that week because we have nothing to compare it to. There's really no Shazam-specific 
film to discuss animated wise. Ooh, that's not true. Oh, is there? There's the animated short, which is uh, has Superman in it. It is called. Let me find it. It's not like a newer one. It's from the one before. I say it's, it's probably an older one. I'll find I it. Didn't see it on my list anywhere. The animated films. It's a short. It's the showcase. It's Superman Shazam: The Return of Black Adam. Hmm. Huh. We, we should... might we might have to grab that and put it on the list. It's it's actually really well done, but it's it's pretty short. So you might have to, you know, talk about it. It's In only like episode. twenty, yeah, yeah, twenty, twenty or thirty minutes, but it's pretty cool, and it actually does a short origin on Shazam. Interesting. But, but I so. will, I, Ryan. We'll add it to the list. We'll give it a look, and if we feel like it's worth putting in, in the episode, we could probably do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at that. Duh. Um. Yeah. So you might be getting a comparison movie next week, after all, uh, gentlemen, we'll, or <laughs> audience. We'll see. We'll see. Um. Yeah. And then after DC Films, because if you want to start coming in on them now, uh, we'll be hitting very quickly and very hard the Marvel films because, oh boy, they moved up the date for uh, Infinity War by a week. So our schedule is all kinds of fucked up right now. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Oh, so, I can't wait for that one. So uh, make sure you tune in because we're going to have Ant-Man and Wasp and uh, Cat Marvel and Infinity War back to back to back, week after week after week, just for you guys. Ooh, yeah. And then after that, I think we have Godzilla planned. Ooh. King of the Monsters, man. We're getting ready for that. Um, Ryan, is there anything else I've missed for the uh, closeout this week? No, I think, I think you got it, sir. All What's right. I, I have to double check anymore because I feel like I've got the worst memory and I forget stuff. Um, <laughs> so thank you all for listening, and we'll see you after the credits. Bye. Bye.